today's generation really needs a lot of prayer. There are a lot of non-believers out there, and their influence is really strong. If you don't consistently have support from God or from your church or from someone you can rely on, eventually you'll stop um, talking to God altogether, and then you might turn into a wrong path, and it will all go down to here from there. Have you ever seen the wonder in the glimmer of her side? Like just being raised in like um, church and like a Christian family all my life. I guess I was just like struggling with the question, who is God to me? Like um, just building my personal relationship with him because a lot that I knew of that God was like my parents' God or the God of, you know, whoever was delivering the message or people at church. Well, for a long time, it just seemed like Christian life really overlapped with like a goody two shoes kind of life because all parents want that for their kids. And I was feeling like just very uncertain about a lot of things like where I should be. With the Wounded Culture, we try to seek our own fulfillment by competing with each other. And I think that one of the biggest problems is that when we take God out of the picture, we try to fill ourselves by ourselves. One of the biggest problems that I've seen in our church, at least, is that we're not welcoming enough. We aren't able to reach out into other people or newcomers that come to our church and that we are stuck within our own friend groups. So there was this one church that I visited. It was like kind of bougie. Uh, everyone was like apathetic. Like everyone was on their phones. Nobody paid attention to the pastor. They had like a 12 p.m. morning service. It didn't feel like anyone was sincere. Like I just, I just wanted to get out of there. In my career, I see so much of the superficial, what the world deems to be successful. The fame, the status, the money, the power. That is what Satan wants us to experience, right? I always tell myself, I dress myself for work, but do I dress myself spiritually to go out there? And it's so easy to forget to read the word because life is busy, right? And then when you're young, you're like, hey, I have so many more fun things to do. After you're reborn again, you really want to desire God, but then whether it's because you don't feel him as much or you don't think he's answering your prayer. He's not answering the way you want him to. You stop trying to rely on him as much. He stops being as true to you as he once was. You know, I always like hear God, hear a lot of testimonies, like how great God works in people's lives. For me, I never really like experienced that. Like everything just became very numb to me. Uh, back then, I didn't really have that many problems. So I didn't feel like there was like a need to really seek him. But like as I grew older, I feel like I see the world more and really, you know, face many problems in my life. You know, like school, family. I really focus a lot on the worldly things and really easily influenced, get influenced by it. Felt like I was like that, like disconnected. A lot of spiritual knowledge, but I don't live it out. And I did a lot of things based on my like my feelings. My position is in bands. Is I have to be on my best behavior at all times because every little thing you do, everyone sees it. This society and America, it's we were taught to be to stay in our comfort zone, and we were taught to just do whatever we want. But that's that's not what God wants, and that's not what I want either. Just being in high school and being a senior, I have to care about my grades a lot, the SAT scores a lot, college applications, and you're just competing with every single student in your school, in your state, in your country, trying to achieve things, trying to get into college and stuff like that. It's difficult to just try to focus on God and focus on what He wants. God has been revealing to me how much and how often Satan actually uses and tweet God's word against me. Like, I might say, yes, I'm God's child, God loves me, but I see the paradox of sin inside of me. My image of God has always been like, <laughs> not good enough, not far enough. It was my, my false image of God. I guess last year's conference, I just got a lot of certainty that encouraged me to pursue my own relationship with God, like without all of those other influences. Well, it's less of like, what does God want me to major in? Or like, should I be playing video games? But it's more like wherever I am in life, God will use me. That's probably exactly what I needed to hear to have me like move forward. When you are living in chaos, it's really hard to find rest. But I always remind myself, like spiritual is priority. Always go back to the truth as your baseline to judge. What's ultimately more important is 
God and our heavenly future. We are inherently sinners. We all have sinned and we're all just bad, basically. But which is why through God's grace, he's using that to change us. Whatever you do in this life, it's not through your own strength. It's always from God. I feel like God is like, his love is absolute. You know, as I continue like to seek him, I see that um, you know, God really does open like paths and like really answers you to really confirm like his presence. Struggles and like problems are just like, it's all God's plan and that you know, he has like a bigger purpose for you. Yes, I still see the depth and the length of my sinful nature. But when I see the reality of the, my flesh and my sin, there are times when I just tremble in fear because I know Satan is also out there waiting to pounce on me. Who am I? to fight the spiritual battles, the dark, the forces of darkness, when I can't even fight the temptations of my own flesh. Now it's driving me to cry out to God. I, I'm realizing that I'm not wallowing anymore, but I turn to truth. And it's okay to have negative feelings, but don't stay in it, don't sink in it. Just question yourself, why are you downcast? And I turn my eyes to God. And I remind myself who God is. And I remind myself to worship Him, to adore Him, to love him because he's my ultimate desire he's my ultimate joy and my ultimate prize I see the world in life. I see the world in god has used people environment and in your lives to bring you to him but it is the truth that you have in you that will be able to help you process the will of god in your life don't believe your feelings so much when you're in this process of growing up Christian family and you know a lot of truths right? and your head get very big you know but when you cannot live it out you have to appreciate there will be shades of gray in our hearts that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit the Lord come to you with the Holy Spirit give the Lord time to show to you keep seeking and God is going to be very relevant to you if you keep seeking him I pray that after this conference you learn how to think through the truth and for that you need to be constantly equipped with the gospel truth. Yes, you cannot control how you feel, but you have no right to live for yourself either. You are called by the Lord to glorify Him this way and take it, pray through it, live like that. You will see, you know, it all has good purpose in the end. But you are not going to go back from this message feeling all right. In fact, you will go back overwhelmed by your emotions again. But remember, the truth stays. Seen the world